Hey, I'm Drew. Welcome to our backyard water park. <laughs> this summer's been hot and dry, and since I live in a small town that has no water parks or splash pads for the joy of swimming in other people's pee, I thought I'd build my own backyard water park to cool down on those hot summer days. So in this video, you're going to see every step along the way, from the framing to the railings to every individual water component. So starting out with the framing and for the base I'm going to use some 2x6 pressure treated lumber. I decided to go with 2x6s because I'm going to have some plumbing that runs underneath this and I want enough room so I don't have too much sticking out the other side of the deck once it's done. So for now I'm screwing everything together with some 3 inch deck screws and you'll see later I'm going to use some lag bolts to hold everything together once I have a little more of the structure down. You want to make sure everything's really square along the way and if possible just build it on a perfectly level surface so that you can use a level to help with that. Same with these posts, I'm just hacking into place with some 3 inch deck screws, but these are definitely going to need some leg bolts as we move forward. So basically I made the front two posts at 9 foot 2 and the back posts were at 9 foot 10. And that's going to give us about a 10 degree slope and from my zero research that is the perfect angle to soak a bunch of kids with with a big bucket of water. So for the roof, I'm just going to use some straight rafters and then put some clear plastic roofing over top. And then I'm going to have to figure out some framing for the dump bucket as well, but we'll figure that out when we get to it. And for the rafters, I had to make the cut at about 11 degrees to get the end cap perfectly parallel with the post. Once I had a rafter cut to length, I could take it up and trace on a cut line. And then I just cut it out with my jigsaw. So I only put in three rafters here, but I did end up changing the design a little bit later on. Now for those leg bolts, I'm using some 3 8 inch carriage bolts and then a couple of nuts to lock it in place. I also drilled the holes slightly off center so that the two bolts coming in wouldn't meet in the middle. Then I added in a few floor joists and the framing for this piece is pretty much complete. Second structure is almost the exact same except I only use 8 foot posts and there will be no roof. And the second story platform is at 4 foot 6 instead of 5 feet like the other side. Also if you want to build it exactly like mine I am going to release some plans in the description below and possibly a 3D SketchUp model so that you can move around it and get the dimension of anything you'd possibly need to cut.
And to screw in the deck boards, I'm using some inch and a half deck screws. Now before I fill in all the floor on the longer structure, I'm just building up this little 18 inch wall with some deck board that's going to house all of the valves for our plumbing. Now for the main water inlet that's going to connect to the garden hose, I'm using this 1 inch Forstner bit to go straight through the posts. For our plumbing main line, I'm using this 3 quarter inch PEX tubing and about three or $400 worth of PEX fittings. So if you've never worked with PEX before, don't be intimidated, it's really easy. Basically, I first put on a clamp ring and then I put on a 3 quarter PEX to 3 quarter female pipe thread fitting and then crimp the ring around it. And then I put a good amount of thread tape on this hose end adapter and threaded it into the PEX fitting. This swivel adapter will accept the end of a hose and that'll be our main feed line for the whole water park. Then I'm putting in four of these T fittings that are 3 quarter inch through and 1 half inch out the T. So there's going to be five water features in this and I'm adding a stop valve on to each line and that's because I'm just feeding with a regular garden hose so I'm likely only going to have enough water to supply one to three lines at a time depending on what's running. But that's not a big deal, we can just turn everything on and off depending on what we're using. You can also see I kept the one line as a three quarter inch and that's for the floor jets and that's mainly because it'll have the most water flowing through it so I want as much supply as possible. All the rest are fine as half inch though. So this first line's running up to the tipping bucket. So I'm just running some half inch pecs along with some elbows up to the second level of the structure and then we'll pick it up there once I have the bucket installed. And I'm just fitting everything loosely now and then I'll clamp the rings once I have everything in place. The next two lines are both going to feed some quarter inch mister line. So I'm just running it up to an elbow and then a PEX to female pipe thread adapter, and then a pipe thread to hose end adapter, and then this hose end fitting that comes with the Mr. Kit that I'll show you later. So for this last half inch line, I'm gonna drill a hole down through the decking. And then it's going to come out as a hose outlet straight out the sidewall. Also don't forget to put some thread tape on every threaded joint that's not a hose end. I just showed that for demonstration. So this is going to connect to the other structure with a garden hose. So on the other side we have a female hose end. That connects to our pecs and then we ultimately lead that up through the floor where we'll pick it up later. This last line is our three quarter inch line and I'm gonna run it down through the floor as well. So this is gonna feed four floor jets. So I'm just running one main line and then springing off a couple of feed lines. And then I'm just gonna cover that up with our decking. Where the main line ends, I made that deck board a little bit shorter and blocked up the joist so that I can put a valve on the end of this and then all I have to do is take out a few screws in this one short piece of deck to open this up and open the valve to winterize it. The main hose inlet is the lowest point in all the rest of the lines, so as long as all the valves are open, all the water should drain out easily and it should be good for the winter then. 
Now back to our floor jets. So I have a pex to three quarter inch female threaded elbow here. And then I'm threading in a hose end adapter and then using some of these hose nozzles as our floor jets. Then I'll mount these onto a surface board and drill a hole through the decking. And then these nozzles will just be poking through the decking and the spray pattern can be adjusted by turning the nozzle. So it's really up to you to position these jets wherever you want. I wouldn't go with more than four though or you won't have very much pressure in each one. One thing to consider too is try to keep the feed line about the same length for every jet so that the water is delivered evenly and you don't have one really close to the source and one really far away. And that's pretty much it for our main plumbing lines. We can piece in more stuff as we need it. So before I install the roof paneling and the tipping bucket, I'm just doing a few modifications to the framing to better support what I'm gonna have to do. For the roof itself, I'm using this clear plastic roof paneling and cut in an eight foot sheet in half which should cover our whole roof. Now for the tipping bucket, I'm using this 20 gallon bin that you probably have around your house filled with toys. And then I'm gonna glue a length of this PVC pipe through the bucket. And then this threaded rod will move through the PVC and be bolted into the stands we put on the top of the roof. That way the PVC pipe isn't fixed and can turn around the threaded rod and ultimately let the bucket tip. For the positioning of the holes, I put them exactly halfway up the bucket and about one inch off center so that one side is heavier than the other. Then I glued the PVC in place with some construction adhesive so that the whole thing will turn as one unit. So I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make this balance and tip automatically or if I'd need to use a pull rope or what. So I first tried to balance it which turned out to be pretty difficult and you'll see why in a bit. Now to finish up that water line we left up here, I'm just nailing them up along the post and then I added on this piece of 2x4 to go over top of the bucket. And then we'll run the water line up along it and feed it through the top where it'll then pour into the bucket.
I also added on another 90 degree elbow at the end of this to pour straight into the bucket, which I guess my camera shut off before that. So the tipping bucket is pretty much done. It's going to take a few tweaks later on, but I'll show you that when we get to it. For now, let's move on to getting everything else together, starting with the rock wall slash ladder. So about two thirds of this I'm making a rock wall and the other third is going to be a ladder. That way it'll stay fun for the kids as they get a little bit older and the rock wall is a little more challenging. So I basically just made it in two separate pieces and then I'm going to screw them together. Then I have these cut up pieces of deck board about two and a half inches wide that I'm going to use as the ladder about every five inches apart or so. And then I just use some normal width deck board with no spacing for the rock wall. So this is a rock wall kit I got on Amazon for like 30 or 40 bucks. And it has everything I needed for the whole rock wall, including the drill bit. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I would just put a piece up and drill through the holes. And then bolt it into place using the provided pieces. I didn't plan it out or anything. I just kind of filled it in as I went and tried to make it as random as possible. Now for the railing, I'm just using standard 2x4s and drilling some 7 8 inch holes with the Forstner bit and then using this aluminum baluster kit and feeding them into the holes. You can also buy these 2x4s pre-drilled but they are, I you not, four times the price as a normal 2x4 so I prefer to just drill them myself. I just used a couple cut off pieces of 2x4 to space it off of the deck and then I pre-sunk a couple Forstner holes and screwed the railing into place with some 4 inch deck screws. The fourth railing is where we're going to mount our turret gun. So I'm going to have this one about a foot shorter and the great thing about aluminum is you can just cut it with a regular miter saw blade. I also notched out a semicircle on the one side to allow that water pipe to feed through. So I wanted to make something pretty cool and unique for a water gun instead of just using a hose. So I'm using some half inch PVC pipe and making up this pretty cool turret gun. So the idea is to have two handles and a long barrel and be able to move on both axes. So to move it up and down I drilled out some 2x4 and then I'm going to extend the PVC pipe through these holes and cap it on one end and the other end is going to be the feed from a hose line. Then after I had everything roughly fit together, I glued it permanently with some purple PVC primer and medium gray PVC cement. And for the end nozzle, I'm using the exact same nozzle that I used for the floor jets. And the fittings are a half inch PVC to female pipe thread. Then a half inch male pipe thread to three quarter inch garden hose thread. And then a hose nozzle. 
Also, the purple primer stains anything it touches, so I sanded that off with some 220 grit sandpaper. To move it on a horizontal axis, I'm using this outdoor seat swivel. And then we'll screw it into both the bottom of the gun and the top of the railing. For the plumbing, I put a hose end on the end of this PEX. And then I used some good flexible rubber garden hose. And then played around with it at a couple lengths to see how the swivel would work. And once I found a good length, I cut the hose and put on a male hose end. I also added a 90 degree elbow to the input of the gun. And now this loop of hose that we have will let us move the gun in any position we want. Then I use the remainder of that rubber hose to connect the feed lines between the two towers. And these just use standard hose thread so I can take this hose off at any time to mow the lawn. Then it was time for a quick test. I also added a hose end shut off valve right at the beginning of that feed so you could turn it on and off at the gun. Now time to perfect that tipping bucket. The main problem is that it's still a little top heavy where the holes were drilled. So without a counterweight, it won't flip back into place. I actually worked on this for like a few days and it seemed like a really simple problem, but no matter what I tried, I kept running into more and more problems. So first I was gonna tether it with a chain so it could only flip in one direction. and then counterweight the backside with a brick so that it would be heavier until the water filled up the other side and it would ultimately tip that way. And that would have worked fine, but I really didn't want to risk that brick being broke out of the bucket and tumbling down 12 feet on top of children that would never see it coming. So after a while of walking around aimlessly and staring at it, the next day I decided the best way to do this was to flip the bucket around so it was weighted to the other side have it tethered so it could only fall in the front direction, and then use a pull cord that goes through the roof that we could pull at any time we wanted. This wasn't as cool in my opinion because it didn't flip automatically, but there are some benefits, one that the kids can pull it themselves, and that you can fill up the bucket as far as you want, where the other one would tip at a certain point every time. I also had to screw in a small piece of two x four to this backside to weight it that way so it always flipped back automatically. It's the same concept as the brick, but it's not nearly as heavy and I'm not as worried about it breaking through the plastic or even if it does hurting anybody if it falls through. Now no water park's complete without a water slide. So I have this five foot tube slide that I got off Wayfair and I just assembled it according to the instructions so I'm not gonna go too far into detail on that. And then I used some 2x4s to frame around the mouth of the slide. And bolted it into place with some quarter inch by one and a half inch lag bolts. As you can see, it's very six foot four adult size. I'm gonna make this a water slide, but I'll get back to that in a second. Now it's time to connect our two towers. I got this rope tunnel on Wayfair. It's usually used with ratchet straps between two trees, but I'm gonna modify it a little to use it as the bridge between our two towers.
So to hold this in place, I built up some two x four framing and then I'm using some inch and a quarter U-bolts. And I use four of them on each side, basically one for every quarter of the circle. And my bolts were pretty long, so I just cut them back with a cutoff wheel once they were installed. The bridge also added enough leverage on the second tower to almost pull it over with a full grown man in it. I don't think it would move much with a kid in it, but I am going to anchor down the far side with some ground anchors just to be sure. Now on to the last of our plumbing. I got this hose and mister kit on Amazon for about 30 bucks. And I'm gonna use this to make a mist wall. So I first fed the hose down into the floor and then I'm gonna bring it straight up this back beam. I also marked out spots for misters about every 10 inches. This kit's really easy to use, you just cut the tubing and the T fittings pop right into place. I then cut up some inch and a half strips of deck board and use that to case around the mister line on both sides. Then the line was still a little loose, so I just used some deck screws to go in beside the tubing and clamp down on the actual T-fit in itself and hold it pretty rigidly in place. I then did the same thing down the other post and connected them with a couple top misters. Now for the water slide, I used the same tubing kit as the misters we just did. And then I zip tied it up along this PEX pipe and ran it along our mister systems out through the wood and right beneath our slide. At the slide, I just used one T-fitting and then drilled a tube size hole on both sides of the slide and fed one of the water lines just inside this hole and then connected them into the T. I then popped in these little drip irrigation ends I had lying around, but you could easily just silicone the raw tubes in place. I also had to silicone the bottom seams of the slide so that the water wouldn't just pour through the cracks. So a fully open valve was maybe a little powerful, but a quarter open valve seemed to work just about perfect. I also might add a couple more heads in here down the slide further as time goes on. Now just a couple visual touch-ups and a sandbox under the second tower and this water park is just about complete.
That gets you pretty good there. <laughs> So overall, this build was over budget and took me way too long, but was it worth it? Absolutely. The total budget for this build was about $2,500, which I thought was bad, but then I looked around at play sets at Home Depot or wherever else, and anything with a slide or two is in like the five dollars to $10,000 range nowadays. When I was a kid, I would have absolutely loved this thing, and to be honest, I still do today, so hopefully I'm in the running for that Uncle of the Year award. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I do a whole bunch of build videos. And coming up next, I'm converting my bike camper I built last time into uh, an electric e-bike version with uh, hopefully 100 or more kilometer range.